All right, hey guys, welcome back from break. Um, I don't have any bad jokes for you today, sorry. Uh, I hope that you had a good break, hope that you enjoyed it. I'm going to review some things from rhetorical analysis that we touched on before the break was over, um, or before it began, I guess. I realized that you know a lot of you probably um, did not work as much as we needed to over break, so there's that. Um, <coughs> My wife is behind the iPad, so if you hear her cough every once in a while, she's helping uh, record this, so say hi. Hi. <laughs> anyway, um, and Baby Cone's back there too, but Baby Cone cannot say hi. Baby Cone has not been born yet. Even if Baby was born, probably couldn't say hi. Anyway, I want you to go ahead and pull out your notes on rhetorical analysis. Um, pull out your jolt the framework to begin with, okay? If you could go ahead and go to the next slide for me. Right, go ahead and pull this out, have your notes out. I wanna discuss this. Um, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see everything that's on the board here, so it'll be important to try to have those notes in front of you. I'll give you a second to do that. All right, while you're doing that, if you haven't yet finished pulling them out, go ahead and make sure that you're, you're getting it done. Um, but I want to go ahead and touch on this, all right? So remember the rhetorical analysis in, in concept and in framework um, is broken into three, three general overarching ideas, right? You need to state what the rhetorical situation is. And remember, rhetorical situation is broken up into three pieces, exigence, audience, and purpose. Exigence, does anybody remember what exigence is? Right, it's context, all right? And then you know who your audience is, that's the obvious one. Those are the people that the text is written for or the speech is given to. And then lastly, you've got the purpose, which is why the text is written, right? All right, so then, now that, remember the purpose is the whole point of the rhetorical analysis because if you can't identify why a text is written, or yeah, why it's written, then is there anything to analyze, right? It, it doesn't make sense. So we have to be able to state that purpose, but remember purpose is dependent upon audience and exigence, right? So. You know, why did, um, we talked about Robert Frost, and we talked about the path that diverged in the woods, right? Um, taking the one that's less traveled by. And we said uh, that the purpose, Sarah, you will appreciate this, we went over the Santa Claus example. Um, we said that the purpose clearly was not about Santa Claus, right? So, you know, two paths diverge in woods has nothing to do with Santa Claus whatsoever. It's not possible. You guys told me that yourselves. So then, because the audience had, wasn't to like you know, a bunch of elves or to a bunch of children who were opening their Christmas presents, right? So the audience is an important person um, to consider when you are talking about what the purpose of a text is. But also you have to consider the exigence, the culture, the community, um, wh what's going on during the time that a speech is given. Think about the, the Steel Factories text that we read, right? Um, where he's talking and he's, he's riling up the community and you know the American peoples and saying, you know, those those factory owners, you know, they need to raise the wages, right, and decrease the prices because otherwise they're just a bunch of evil people. Well, um, the exigence is going to be the fact that, right, it's war times, right, and so they're having to figure out, okay, uh, how does this affect the purpose, right, because if there were no war times and it was just, you know, um, yeah, just standard everyday society, everybody's kind of going about doing their own thing. Maybe people don't even use steel, right? That would change the entire purpose of why the president was giving that speech. It would, it would have no impact whatsoever. So the, the exigence, the context, what's going on, as well as the audience, right, affects the purpose in terms of what's being said and why it's being said, right? All right. Next section, so after we deal with this, and now you need to know that these three things are all gonna show up in our introduction, and we'll go over structure in another video. All right, then we've got the appeals, and I told you we're doing a brief review, so I'm trying to move quickly. We've got ethos, you guys remember what ethos is, right? Right, ethics, you know, morals, and the credibility of the author who's speaking, or who he's appealing to, if they pull in like references to, to um, famous people who have some credibility, right? What is the ethos? Um, you know, what, are, what, is that, what is that thing when I, when I speak to you that lends me some credibility, right? 
Um, if I'm talking to a bunch of musicians, then I want to make sure I'm talking about musicians when I'm supporting my ideas. Um, if I'm talking, uh, but I also want to talk about it from a moral stance as well, right? You know, is there is there s uh, some sense of what is right and what is wrong within the realm of music? Um, <clears throat> then we got logos, logos being reason, right? So, am I appealing to logic, right? Am I using logic in what I'm saying, right? And then last, we've got pathos. What is pathos? Right, emotional appeal. <clears throat> and so when we talk about emotional appeal, what we're really talking about is, all right, can I pull on your heartstrings a little bit, right? Can I, can I get an emotional reaction out of you by saying this certain thing? I don't have to have any logic or morality or appealing to anybody of credibility in order to get an emotional appeal out there. Um, I don't have to use emotion or ethos to have a logical appeal, and I don't have to have a sense of um, logic or emotion in order to appeal to a person's sense of morality. A person shouldn't murder somebody is an ethical appeal, right? Um, a logical appeal would say something along the lines of um, you shouldn't murder somebody because you will get in trouble for it, right? There's a sense of logic and reason there. And then you've got the emotional appeal that might say, please don't murder my mother. Um, don't you have a mother? Right? Because there's that sense of emotion. So we've got the appeals. And now all three of those things are sort of, are, are an aspect of the tone, right? The tone is what is um, the way that the person is formulating um, their voice, right? Uh, or do they, do they have a concern tone or are they an apathetic tone, you know, they just don't care? Or do they, do they sympathize, right? They, they feel bad for somebody, they have a sympathetic tone. Um, you got all sorts of them. I'll get you that list of tones a little bit later. All right, so after we deal with the appeals, we move down into surface features. All right, part of surface features slash kind of transition from tone is going to be your organization and your structure of the paper, right? So when I read it, when I read a text, it's got a certain structure to it. Why did the person giving this speech or writing this essay go in a specific order? Why did they put this first and this last? Why didn't they put their main idea, you know, in the middle of their speech? It wouldn't make sense, right? So you want to give your main idea up front, you'll, otherwise you'll lose people's attention. <clears throat> All right. Um, other thoughts on that, you know, why, why did they talk about this concept first and this one second as opposed to switching them around, right? That's important. Why did they save their story that they wanted to use to, until you know, the end of the text as opposed to the beginning? Or why did they use the beginning instead of the, the end? It makes a difference. All right, surface features. Now, we talked about these. The three obvious ones are going to be diction, syntax, and imagery. Now, when we talk about diction and syntax and imagery, these should be like your supporting surface features. They shouldn't be your main features. I don't want to spend an entire body paragraph talking about diction. The author used this word here and this word here, and here's why they use this word here, right? Um, those should be supporting concepts. So like if I find an illusion, I say, and in this illusion, this author used this word in order to convey this sense, right? That matters, all right? Um, syntax is nothing more than word order or sentence structure. You guys know that already. So when we talk about syntax, we're talking about why did the author say or the speaker say in the sentence, um, this concept at the end of the sentence is supposed to be at the, as opposed to at the beginning, right? Example, um, why didn't it, why, what's the difference between these two sentences? Um, you know, I went for a run and then I died. Or, I died after I went for a run. Right, it places the emphasis in a different place. When I say, you know, I went for a run and then I died, the emphasis is on what part? Death. But if I say, I died after I went for a run, then the emphasis is, is on the fact that, well, I didn't die until after I went for the run, right? So it's about the run itself. So you, why does an author order the sentence the way that they do? All right, we talk imagery. We're talking about, right, painting, painting word pictures. I don't need to go into an explanation of that. You understand it. But it's also not worth... Imagery can sort of put within the figurative language a little bit. This is going to be your rhetorical strategies, figurative language, same kind of idea. You can sort of say imagery fits into that because if, if an author uses just a ton of imagery in their text, it, it is totally fair game to write an entire body paragraph about. Okay? Um, other figurative language or rhetorical strategies, you got that whole list of 30-some words that you've learned. Um, we've taken two quizzes on it already. And it, it, 
it is significant in that if we don't know the strategies, you're not going to be able to analyze it. Now, I've had several people say, well, I just have a hard time finding the strategies. We'll go over that.